Have you ever considered that the source of your low mood is in your gut? So how exactly does our gut health affect the brain, including our feelings and our mental state? Have you ever heard of the gut-brain connection or the gut-brain axis? It's a real thing. Let's talk about it. I personally learned about the gut-brain connection when I was in medical school, but not for my professors. I found that I was feeling sluggish, I was having some mood swings, and just an overall blah, depressed feeling. My energy levels were also down. At the time, medical science wasn't talking about a gut-brain connection at all. However, in a research lab that I was working in as a student, one of the techs said, you should see this person, Alice, that we go to for holistic nutrition. Now at the time, I didn't have much money, and it wasn't anything I ever heard of before, but I thought, nothing else is helping, I'll give it a shot. Basically, she put me on the kind of diet that now everybody knows has a health-promoting effect for the body and the brain. At the time, there was very little data about diet and its effects on mood or even overall health. To be honest, I was doubtful that her suggestions were really going to make a big difference. But she really encouraged me to be diligent for three months to see the effects. I figured I had nothing to lose, and I really wasn't feeling that great. She was right. Lo and behold, right around at that nine to 10 week mark, the lights came back on. I felt like my old self again. I felt like my mood was back what it used to be. And really importantly to me as a medical student, I felt that my focus was right where it should be. One of the things I was personally doing was eating way too many sweets, causing these blood sugar ups and downs, which was adding to a negative mood. But also, I was eating a lot of foods that were altering my gut and my gut microbiome. She actually had me go out of my way to eat cultured foods that had plenty of probiotics in them. But at the time, we didn't even talk about things like probiotics, and it was rare to even get them in a bottle. So food sources were really the focus. I did all of these things. And I have to tell you, I noticed that not only my brain changed, my whole body changed. My energy levels changed. I exercised better, and I was a better student. This is what really led me on the path to nutrition, integrative nutrition, and thinking about what was missing from all of the great medical science I was learning. So here's what we know. The health of the gut can very much affect the health of the brain, can very much affect mood, and even cognition. There's now studies to show it. We've talked about inflammatory and anti-inflammatory foods, and we know that inflammation is one of the processes that spurs on the process of depression. But it's not just the inflammatory or anti-inflammatory effects of the food in the bloodstream, but also how those foods affect the gut itself and the gut lining. So believe it or not, we have something along the lines of 30 trillion bacteria in the body, most of them in the gut. And while the mass of them isn't so great, the genetic influence might be even greater than the rest of the cells of our body. A simple way of looking at this is that these bacteria can fall into two general categories. The ones that are good for us and provide health-promoting effects, and the ones that are problematic. And we want the balance of the good ones to the so-called bad ones to be way in favor of the good ones. However, what we do in our day-to-day -day lives can really affect that balance. Let's think for a minute what those good bacteria do. For one thing, they keep inflammation down in the whole system. And this is so important because when they lower the inflammation of the gut lining, less of that inflammation is coming through and circulating in the rest of the body. They also protect us from some of the bad pathogens. In a way, they provide that invisible barrier between you and the outside world. Another thing they do is help us to metabolize things like vitamins and minerals and even 
activates some of the vitamins into a form that they can be utilized and assimilated. And that's just scratching the surface. These bacteria really have an important effect. We don't even know all of the things that the genetic codes in these bacteria are doing for us. So we need to do as much as possible when we're thinking about the foods we're putting in the gut to promote the good bacteria and to keep the bad bacteria at bay. This means we wanna minimize foods that insult the gut lining and destroy the bacteria, including too much alcohol, and even limiting our use of things like antibiotics to times we absolutely need them. In addition, the foods that we eat have a big impact on the function of the gut and also the bacterial balance. The typical American diet of a lot of processed foods, processed meats, bad fats, lend itself to an unhealthy balance. Whereas eating nutritive foods, cultured foods, leafy greens, healthy fats, cultured foods, this lends itself to a healthy balance of the gut. Now there's these terms that people hear a lot about but can be confusing, such as prebiotics and probiotics. What does that really mean? So to be clear, prebiotics refers to the food that those bacteria eat. We're focusing again on the healthy bacteria. And that food for the healthy bacteria is in plant sources, particularly fibrous type of plants. And it's a particular component of the plant called resistant starch. The term resistant starch means resistant to digestion in the small bowel because that food moves along the digestive tract to the large bowel where it's fermented and then provides the food for the good bacteria. So that's what prebiotics are. Ideally, we would get these from the diet. Now, there are prebiotic supplements and sometimes people need to take them. For example, if I get a patient whose gut is really in a bad place and the diet is really poor, and we know there's gonna be a transition period to eating those good foods, then maybe I'll recommend a prebiotic. But by and large, I think the prebiotics, the food for the good bacteria, should be gotten from the diet. And a lot of those cruciferous vegetables, like artichokes, for example, even mushrooms, which is a different type of a plant source, provide a lot of good prebiotic food. The term probiotics means taking exogenously the good bacteria in the in the form of a pill or a capsule, in the hopes that they will recolonize the bowel. Do we need to take probiotics? Again, it really depends upon the person. So for example, if I've had a patient who recently needed to have a course of antibiotics, maybe they had strep throat or something like that, then I strongly encourage them to take a good amount of probiotics to repopulate any of the good bacteria that may have been destroyed because it'll happen a lot quicker than if they don't take them. We know the healthy bacteria is powerful. We know, for example, that people who have a hard time getting over certain types of gastrointestinal infections, even doing something called a fecal transplant can make all the difference in the world because you're bringing in the healthy microbiome of somebody else. We think there's other ways of doing that and sometimes probiotics are a good one. But again, every once in a while, a severe measure is needed. We know from studies both in animals and more recently in humans, that sometimes probiotics have a direct positive impact on mood in depressed people. And again, this is because the health of the gut has a big impact on the health of the brain, including mood. So what are some signs that your gut health might be affecting your mental well-being? What I like to do is take inventory of both mood symptoms and cognitive symptoms, along with any symptoms that might be going on in the gut. Because if you have both going on, then for sure, this is something that needs to be addressed on the gut level. So on the brain side, very commonly we see depressed mood or mood swings or brain fog. On the gut side, there can be irregularities in bowel movements, gas, bloating, reflux, those types of things. So when you have both going on, get that gut in order and oftentimes both the brain and the gut feel better. And for sure, paying attention to gut health can have a synergistic, even additive effect to other types of things you may be doing for your mental health and mental well being. We know, for example, that antidepressants can decrease inflammation, just like paying attention to the gut, 
probiotics, making sure that the good bacteria are in a good state, can also lower inflammation. Inflammation being one of the mechanisms to spur on the process of depression. For example, if you're involved in a psychotherapy process, you're going to be more present and more able to engage in that process if your gut's in a good place because your brain's going to be in a better place. And we know that meditation is good for you. It relaxes the body, brings inflammation down. Your ability to adhere to your meditation program or stay focused on your meditation will get better as your gut gets better because your brain will get better. So. Get that gut in great shape because that'll help you to get the brain in great shape. I'm curious if you've ever noticed anything, like maybe you had that heavy meal or binged on something that was really bad for you. How'd you feel the next day? Leave your comments below.